Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the show where a real statistics professor gives you sports betting. This is College Basketball Friday, December 29th. Because, Jared, this is a college basketball show, but I have to ask, given what we just witnessed in college football at the Pop-Tarts Bowl, mm. how incredible that was. Have you since then eaten a Pop-Tart? Because I have, and Mrs. Professor has, so the advertising is working. So I have a relatively unhealthy obsession with strawberry pop tarts in the base case. Mm. Um, the the best way for me to avoid that is just to not have them around. Mm. Mm. Um, I do believe that I have an eight pack of strawberry toaster pastries currently in the pantry, which I may break into after this. Mm. But yes, around my house, there were concerns about people eating, you know, the pop tart mascot after the game. <laughs> And they were like, that's gross. Why would they do that? And I was thinking, yeah. well, that's why we live in the same house because you would not touch it. I would eat your share for you. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I, the marketing is 100% working. Mm. I also mm -hmm. noticed somebody said they called out the Duke's Mayo Bowl. They did. They um, did. They were like, take that Duke's Mayo Bowl. And it's like, yeah. wow, like shots fired from bowl games. I love there, it. There has been a lot. Uh, yeah. So, Okay, this is a college basketball show, but whatever. <laughs> there have been a lot of bowls this season where the weather's been bad and there were so mm. many opt-outs and everything. Mm. And so you're kind of like, you know, I understand there needs to be a reward for the players, but I'm like, why are we having half of these bowl games? But then you have like the Duke's mm. Mayo bowl, bowl having the, the mm. mayo shakes and, and you've yeah. got the Pop-Tarts bowl setting mm. up a beef with the Duke's Mayo bowl and a mm. life-size Pop-Tart that you can actually eat. And you're like, this is what college football is about. Mm. I mean, mm. really, this mm -hmm. is – outside of the playoff like this is why these bowls exist this is why college football is the greatest sport in the world i'll get off my soapbox now since this is not a football show yeah no, i completely agree we, we need we need more of this anyway this is a college basketball show we have three <laughs> picks on the free show we have three more in the extended cut um if you are interested in seeing the extended cut you can get that on dub club uh yeah i always say I, i'm terrible at marketing the bottom line is you know um if, if you're looking for a projection on every single game a team total on every single game um, a projected spread, a projected money line on every single college basketball game, every single one of them, every day, every college football game, uh, every major league baseball game, uh, every NFL game coming soon, NHL and more. Um, we get a lot of information out there. So if you want to be a, a smarter, but you can use it however you want. Some people use it a little bit more religiously. Some people use it just as an extra tool in their toolkit. However you want to use the information I provide, you can get that on Dub Club. We appreciate your support. If you're over there, you can get $10 off your first month. Use the promo code in the show description or the code on screen. If you're with us on YouTube, if you use that QR code will take you right there. And you can lock in the current pricing forever. So we really uh, hope you give us a chance over there and see if the information that's provided uh, works for you. And again, you get the extended cut where we'll talk about three more games. You clearly like hearing us talk about college basketball. So um, there's more of that <clears throat> over on Dub Club if you want to sign up. Otherwise, though, Michigan is hosting McNeese State. Because Jared, we talk about, we, we try to um, intersect the biggest games with the best picks on the free show <clears throat> we we and some and some slides are really terrible <laughs> like last night and it's like there's just the games are very good and they kind of are what they are but uh this is you know not the best game of the night i think my model has it as like the eighth best game so there so there are better games in this but um you know again trying to intersect best games most interesting games with um with best picks and that's what we do on the free pick show. On the extended cut, we go really off script and get to the terrible games, but the picks we really like. So, uh, again, if, if you want that, you know, that and the A grade picks are over on Dub Club. And, and is really viewer, good. viewer, if you want to see me at my best, you need to be over on Dub Club and get the extended cut because uh, the phrase I like to use is I was in my bag with today's extended cut games. Yeah. So, like these games, like I'm here to talk about them, yada, yada, yada. I'm really here for the extended cut. So just keep that in mind. If you want the full experience, go join us on Dub Club. There you go. Um, so not maybe the greatest game, Michigan at home. They should win big. I, I don't think anyone's, you know, questioning that. But what we're questioning is, can they win by double digits or not? Spread is 10. You know, can they win by 15, which is what the model says, or they can only win by five. Magnus State isn't bad. Um, and when Michigan has the ball, it'll be a pretty even competition. Michigan's defense is nothing to write home about. But when Michigan has the ball, I mean, it's going to be very one-sided. They're going to really – dominate against McNeese State's defense. Uh, Michigan's a much better team. Again, we've got them by 15, so we're going to like the 10. It's a B grade. Um, Cousin Jared, we've 
kind of tried to figure out how to parse the grades, especially they're the most usable for people. Obviously, we want the better letter grades to be better picks, but we also want to make sure we're not giving out too many A grade picks. Because a lot of people like to play all the A grades, and we don't want to have too many of them. Uh, and then we like to have the B picks, where you can, if you want to play a few more, that sort of thing. And, and spreads are tougher in college basketball, especially when you to the big spreads. And so that's why this is a B grade. Otherwise, the value is there for this pick, given how much value the model sees. Five points is a pretty big discrepancy, especially this time of year. Um, we've been high on Michigan all season. I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. Maybe we're a little bit too high on, but even though this is only a B grade, I do think this falls in the category, because Jerry, that you're always talking about, which is, you know, even if we're off by a couple points, there's still some value on this pick. We're only to 10, risking... 1.31 units to 1.19. Cousin Joe, what are your thoughts? So I, I don't want to disparage McNeese here. Uh, McNeese is is 10 and 2. They, I think, are one of the best teams in the Southland. And mm-hmm. so uh, I, I will say a team that we, a team and a conference that I'm sure we'll be talking about on more extended cuts as mm-hmm. the, as the mm-hmm. season goes yeah. on. We love us some. And, and a team we've backed a lot this year. That's a pretty solid team. Yeah, yeah. Um, but their schedule has been what would you would expect from a McNeese state team. Uh, many, many of the teams that they have played and beaten this season have deficiencies. Again, not to take anything away from McNeese state, but they haven't exactly played a murderer's row of a schedule. You compare that with Michigan, who even in the non-conference, um, you know, because they, they Big Ten starts conference Start, play. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so so early. Um, they have played a few conference games at this point, but in the non-conference, uh, you know, they've played St. John's, they played Long Beach state, which is the best team in, in the, the big West. They've played Memphis, Stanford, uh, Texas tech, Florida. They have really, Oregon. Challenged, yeah, Oregon, uh, they have really challenged themselves. And so if you look at their non-conference record and even the games that they've played at home, like you wouldn't say that there's anything especially interesting there, but you look at the teams that they have played that it's, at McNeese State's caliber, and it's not very many of them, but the ones that they have, they beat UNC Asheville by 25. They beat Youngstown State by 30. Uh, they just wrecked Eastern Michigan by you know 18 points or something like that. At every game where they have played a team of McNeese's caliber, they have won the game handily by 15, 20, 25 points. They just haven't played very many teams like McNeese. And so I, I think that um, – Mich- the the caliber of team that Michigan has played against is not being adequately accounted for in in, in this number. Um, I think this is one of those things where Michigan comes out and they put me in these kind of in their place relative to to Big Ten standards and out of conference slate that um, Michigan has played. Uh, I think they're way way overmatched. Uh, Going to overmatch McNeese here. And, and and I don't want to talk too much about one game. I don't want to ramble on it, but I, I think this is a really important point to make that, that I'm I need to make sure everyone hears which is you know we, we say it all the time and I put it in the outro slides but we get new people in all the time and, and we get people you know it takes you what seven times to hear something before you <clears throat> you know fully learn it ways yep 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 yeah and I don't even know how true that is specifically but but that's the the you, you know the <laughs> the old line we aren't trying to predict one game. And, and, and that's obvious because Michigan cannot win by 15.1. That's not possible. That's why I put the decimal there just to kind of reinforce that, right? We're talking about an average game. And the value of the model isn't to try to predict one game. And and, and I, it's tough because I feel like I am... Um, statistics and probability comes natural to me and I know it doesn't come natural to a lot of people. So sometimes I, I struggle to explain it. And so I, I, I am a teacher and I've tried to hone my craft, but I, I do want to make sure that we spend the time needed to, to understand this point because we aren't trying to predict one game. And in a sample size of one, we never know what's going to happen, especially with 18 year old kids, mm-hmm. right? It, 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 anything can happen. What, what the value of the model is, is to, kind of tell us exactly what you said. And you can look at the schedule and do that. And the reason we have the model, and the reason why I think the, the Dub Club subscription is valuable for you is there's a lot of games and the model helps highlight these things for you. So you don't have to look through every single game mm-hmm. because if you dive into this game, I think you would find exactly what, because you're exactly what you were talking about, which is, yeah, Michigan's played a lot tougher of a team when they've play, kind, of, kind of gone down in weight class, they've handled their business. Mm-hmm. And that's what the model kind of highlights for us is to say this Michigan team is, 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 better by a by a decent margin than McNeese. So it's just kind of guiding you in the right direction. You can say on average, this is what the data that we have 
indicates to us and we can back it up with our own research if we want, but that can be very time consuming to do. And so yeah. that doesn't mean Michigan will win by more than 10. There are no locks in gambling, right? As much as the, the space is riddled with people who would tell you otherwise, um, the, the bottom line is that on average, we think that Michigan should win this by a lot. And there's value in this number similar to investing in, in stocks, right? We don't know if the price of the stock will go up or down. What we can say is the price we think is over or undervalued. And that leads us to a decision based off if we think it's over or undervalued. That's kind of all on Michigan here. Minus 10, B grade pick. And that's enough about that game. We'll move on to Washington State and Utah. Cousin Jared, we have the the the, the free pick show here, and we kind of talk, we talked about it. Right? We like to have the better games, the bigger games that people are interested in, intersected with the best picks. And unfortunately for this game and the next game, they both are on Pac-12 Network, which exactly 12 people in the country get. Um, and, and exactly and, and soon nobody. Well, and soon no <laughs> yeah. three sports bars in the country get it. I have called them up. I've called them. There's three of them. Yeah. And so nobody will be able to watch this game. Obviously, if you're out there in that direction, you have a higher probability of it, I guess. Um, but, uh, you know, it will be a better quality game. Hopefully you can watch it. I won't be able to watch it, unfortunately. But Washington State and Utah here, we've talked all year about this Utah team. They've been good to us. Um, they've been a really strong team. They're great on defense. Washington State's a solid team, probably a little bit underrated in general, because I think most people wouldn't assume Washington State is a top 100 team. Uh, maybe if you follow the sport really close to you, but otherwise they don't want to have that name recognition they haven't mm -hmm. been you know in tournament consideration and if you're number 79 you know you make a running conference you you're going to be on the bubble potentially they're not there yet yeah. but but they're you know it's, it's on the table they're a decent team mm -hmm. um solid off it's all on defense. it's just utah we, we think it's the better team we talk about a lot the pac-12 how hard it is to win on the road we saw this here with with usc uh, and, and oregon oregon kind of controlling that game we see ucla at least so far in, in early you know first half the first um you know, two thirds of that game struggling at a, a very bad Oregon State team, and that's kind of the bottom line: is that Utah's a better team at home. It, it's tough to hang in there in these road games. This is one of the toughest places to play uh, because the altitude in this conference. Yeah. Model says Utah by nine and a half, only a C grade, but uh, you know, this game could easily get out of hand for Washington State, and then you start thinking about are you conserving your energy for the for the following game a couple of days later yeah <laughs> knowing that, that the next game on this trip i have to assume i haven't looked specifically but knowing the pact will have to be washing i have sorry has to be colorado um on on sunday and it's like if it's not going well don't waste yeah. too much energy because colorado is a really tough place to play colorado is good too so this could get out of hand only a c grade but uh because jared i'm with you I, I like this utah minus seven right here yeah so Part of my analysis here is Utah has looked good this season. And I will probably admit that I am getting really, really hung up on the fact that Utah beat BYU mm -hmm. um, in Salt Lake City just a, a couple of weeks ago. Like we've talked about it a lot on the times that I've been on the show, but I just think that BYU team is so solid. And it wasn't a, a, a fluky way that they won that game they were in it the entire time led led most of the time now they never led by a large margin but they it never really felt like um they were going to let the game get out of hand and i was just so impressed by that i yep. feel like if utah plays to that level washington state's not going to be able to, to hang with them so to your point washington state's offense probably a little bit um underrated utah it's one of the things they've been hanging their hat on is their offense has been so good this year but surprisingly i'm i'm surprised that their defense is actually rated better by sideline than, than what their offense is because, you know, everybody likes to talk about offense and that's what I see yeah. with Utah. Uh, some of those high scoring games that, that they've won. Um, I just think this is a tough travel spot for Washington state. Utah has proven that they can play really well against really good teams at home. If they give that same type of effort here in their first conference game, I think they're going to win this game by double digits. I feel like they probably already played a conference game because the Pac-12 stuck one in, but or, or, or back early in the conference slate. It, it, I, I say that just in case they played another one. They, you know, they've already played a conference game because I think they've all played one or so by now. But um, the Pac-12 does the weird things, Big Twelve or Big Big Ten as well. But um, yeah, early on here, this is a good way to start off your conference season. 
you know, for Utah playing Washington State, and you would have to assume would be on Sunday Washington uh, at home. I mean, you got a you got a chance to start off two and zero there against two decent teams. But go ahead and lock your home wins in, which will be mm-hmm. very key for them. And what should be a a, a fascinating Pac twelve race. I, I don't think it's quite as uh, good as maybe we hoped, but I think there should be a lot of decent teams, not a lot of great teams, uh, as we've seen some of the teams are. Um, you know, struggling obviously Arizona is really good, but when you get behind that, I, I think it's been a lot of disappointment for a lot of these teams. But um, that said, I think I think there were teams are they're all kind of decent, so it should be interesting, uh, good good spots to bet on because they're all be close to each other and they're mediocrity, I guess I will yeah. say. Um, speaking of the class of the Pac-12 Arizona, you know, starting off on the road here with again, I haven't confirmed the schedule, but we know how the Pac-12 operates. So if, if they don't and they're like going to a random non-conference game or something over the weekend, then <laughs> they probably would. This probably actually is. I'm probably wrong on this because this is probably when the Pac-12 did the one conference game. And they're, no, they, and, uh, they, Arizona is doing the normal thing. They are playing, they are doing the Cal, thing. They're they're playing Cal on Friday and Stanford we, on Sunday. We just, yeah, but so we just get used to what we know what they do, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then like they, one time they randomly don't and we get all confused. But yeah. Arizona, obviously really good. Uh, Southern has a number, uh, you know, up up at the top five, uh, obviously. Then they're all, all season, really. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, great offense, great defense. Nothing more to say about Cal. Pretty good on offense. Pretty bad on defense. Uh, Cal's obviously going to be one of the weaker teams in the Pac-12. Pace-wise, you know, this is one of the things we always talk about. That Cal has to want to slow this game down simply because if they get no track beat with Arizona, they're hosed. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing, though, is that is Cal good enough to slow this game down? Because Arizona should be able to score points at will against a defense this bad. Um, you know, and, and that's part of the reason why we're going over 156. It's our free a great pick of the day here. I saw that projects 161.6. We've gone over on a few of these Arizona games, won a few, lost a few. Mm-hmm. When it hasn't won... It's been, I think, the Arizona-Alabama game where we went over, and I think the teams combined to shoot like three for 912 from three point in the first half or something like that. Uh-huh. And I think they were like kind of equally bad in the second half. You know, this one doesn't project to be like that, to be a back-and-forth shootout. It just projects to be Arizona, who, as we talk about, can always put up 100, putting up 100 on Cal, and thus yeah. basically doing the heavy lifting, getting us over 156. Because you know, what are your thoughts? So y'all, you know, I, I'm I'm gonna sit here and, and list off scores, and I'm just gonna have to ask you, viewer, to trust me when I tell you that the teams I'm about to list off here are on the upper level of of pace, and probably none of these teams are are going to match the pace of Arizona. Uh, but Cal this season had a game that got over 160 against Pacific, uh, fast team. They had a game that got to 147 against UTEP, fast team. Had a game against Tulane. Tulane might actually be close to Arizona in pace. <laughs> um, that game got to 165. Uh, they played Santa Clara. That game got to 153. Like every time that they have played, and then they've had a couple of overtime games that went way above, but that's overtime, so we'll, we'll throw them out. Um, every time that Cal, number one, Last year, two years ago, loved a good calendar just as much mm-hmm. as the next guy. Mm-hmm. They were one of the slowest teams in the country. We, we, we were playing them in basketball and football a couple of years ago, and now the times that they are changing. Yes, yes. And so, number one, Cal has uh, just changed in, in general. But also, every time that they have played a, a, a fast-paced team, whether it's th- them giving up a lot of points or them scoring a lot of points, um, those games have generally gone into the mid-150s. Arizona is on a different level offensively, uh, maybe a similar place to Tulane, but just offensive efficiency on a different level than any of the other teams that I just mentioned. And so like the, so, okay. The reason that I would think if maybe if this was the second game, you know, maybe Mm -hmm. if this was Sunday and they were playing like Stanford or something, you could say, okay, second game in three days on a road trip conference game. Maybe you could talk me into that's why this line would be set low. I, I, I can't get there with this Arizona team on the the first leg of um, a road trip in in conference play. Like again, maybe they'll fall flat on Sunday. uh, Fresh fresh legs too. Yeah. Yeah. Fresh legs here. Like it just doesn't, doesn't make any sense against the way that this Cal team has played this, this season Um, below average pace. We can see they're like an above average offense, this in a below average defense. So like, this isn't the normal, um, Cal team from a pace perspective that we've come to know in years past. 
And, and you know, the viewer might hear kind of what you said and say, uh, those teams did not have the defense that Arizona has. And I would say 100%, absolutely. And then I would just counter with those teams don't have the offense Arizona has either, yeah. right? <laughs> it's like you said, it's whether they're scoring or, or allowing, it's kind of more they just are very happy going at that pace. Mm -hmm. um, that's a little bit faster. They don't seem to be either good enough to stop it and or they're wanting to do it. because you know They're better than that team and they're like, yes, let's do it. Or they just can't stop it because they don't have the talent. Yep. to stop it because it, it you know it takes talent obviously discipline of course to slow a team down it's not the easiest thing to do especially with how good arizona is and so you might say yeah cal's not going to score quite as many points as those games you listed off uh because arizona's defense and i'd say yeah but they're going to allow more because cal's defense is not good and arizona's offense is really good so we're going to go over 156 and same caveat supply that we talked about earlier right just because it's an a grade that is and it's a lock what it means is we just think there's extra value in this number We've had several cases where we've had extra value in the number and it doesn't work. And, and sometimes the market has kind of showed us that value. Mm -hmm. Again, the value doesn't necessarily mean that individual plays are going to work. What it means is if we're getting that value, it will work in the long run, right? In college football, the North Carolina, West Virginia game is a great example where we took that over 54. That thing was bet up to like 62, which went through key numbers of 55, 58, 59, 61, 62, right? For the push. Yeah. Yeah. And it didn't even sniff it, right? So it, it, it's one of those things where we say, yeah, the market kind of, told us yes we got great value on it but the value doesn't always happen and so we think there's good value at this number doesn't mean it will go over right and, and i know many of you are i'm preaching to the choir uh but i just want to make sure especially for anybody new here that we aren't trying to sell you a magic this is for sure going to win what we're trying to say is the, the, here here's one number of a handful that we've identified uh, there are more available on dub club more in the extended cut more of the a grades where we just think there's there's value in this number at least where it is right now and we think these are the types of plays that make long-term successful sports betting and our track record we believe is proven that and again you can see the website there on the bottom picture the professor.com you can always check out our historical results there and verify that for yourself which takes us to the part where we say please join us over on dub club with the extended cut we will talk northern illinois iowa St. Thomas and North Dakota and Northwestern say LSU cousin Jared, as you mentioned, uh, weaker games, but you are going to have uh, a time with the, the, this is why you are here. These yep. three games yep. that might not make people's radar, but we think even though none of them are a grade picks, we think there are three really yes. good investment opportunities. And then we want to make sure that everyone on dub club is aware of them that along with the a grades, these are three more picks that should be made yep. parting words for you before we have 60 seconds of music and hopefully see you on the other side for the extended cut. Two things. Number one, I don't want anybody to think that I'm being held hostage here, but I am often told that I need to pick a better game to talk about on the free show. Um, so <laughs> just just know that I have almost full uh, production say in, in the extended cut, not so yeah. much in the first half. So if you want to see yeah. the cousin Jared special, you got to stick around. Uh, the second yeah. part is I want to give everybody an update on my flossing. I've gone to Ooh. every other night. So I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm still doing pretty well. Uh, you mentioned Pop-Tarts. Pop-Tarts will get in between your teeth, people. Um, mm. So if you have enjoyed a pop tart after the pop tart bowl, mm. make sure that make sure you floss your teeth before you go to sleep. Yeah. The, the backstory for me was new. At some point, I ended up having to have a root canal um, with a crown, and it was absolutely terrible. Maybe one of the most painful experiences of my life. Thankfully, I've like never had like a kidney stone because I've heard that's pretty bad. Um, mm. But yes, it was very very bad. It was very painful. I was not happy, and so I said, "Hey, everyone, if you could just just floss every night before you go to bed, make your teeth a little bit happier. Yep. Uh, can't can't hurt." Yeah. Uh, so it's, you know, we, we give her once while I give a little life advice here as well. Um, all right, here we go. 60 seconds of music. You can hopefully see on the other side. If you want that dub club is the place to be link in the show description to save off your first month and lock in the current year price. And you are running out of time. If you want to do that, see y'all soon. Mm -hmm.